Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of Eve University. Crowd Control Productions plans to deploy the Ascension patch to the Tranquility Live server on November 15th, and it's going to change the character sheet that we all know and love. Or hate. Depending on your point of view. I liked it at any rate. Today is Wednesday, November the 2nd, 2016, and I'm on the Singularity Test server running build number 1092397. Just so that we're all prepared for the new character sheet when it hits, let's take a look at it now. The character sheet is still accessed by clicking on your miniature portrait at the top of the Neocom bar. Uh, this is what the character sheet looks like now. So the first thing right off, and I'm going to go through this basically from the top down. So. The first thing you notice is your current clone state, which will be either Alpha or Omega. If you're returning to EVE Online from a long absence, be aware that this does not mean what it used to anymore. The different grades of medical clones no longer exist. Your basic medical clone now protects all of your skill points for free. There is no more losing 5% of the excess when you get pod killed because you forgot to upgrade your medical clone. That went away about a, a year or two ago, approximately. So, but EVE Online is going to be introducing a, a, a new free-to-play mode, which is called Clone State Alpha. Anybody who's subscribed is going to be Clone State Omega. I'll talk about that later in this video. Next, you have the name of your character, and you also have the location of your medical clone and your security status. So the maximum being positive five if you've been shooting lots and lots of NPCs that have Concord bounties on their heads, and the minimum being negative 10 if you've been com uh, committing lots of crimes in high and low security space. Next, you have six major tabs across the top, skills, character, interactions, pilot license, skins, and history, and I will cover each section one at a time. So the first major tab is skills, and you do have an arrowhead that you can expand or collapse this section. If you collapse it, all you've got are the icons for the different skill categories. Uh, it will tell you right here how many skill points you've invested total. Uh, in presumably this is in skill levels that you've already completed ends in nine eight four <clears throat> yeah that number didn't change when i closed and reopened the character sheet so i think that's skill points in completed levels of skills but that's how many skill points you have right and you can see how many of the different uh skill categories there are and there's 23 categories right now so you can mouse over any given category, and uh, you can see how many levels you've trained to that category. Uh, so for example, let's take a look at targeting. Now there's only eight skills in targeting, so there's only up to 40 levels that you can train, and I've trained everything in targeting up to level five. Uh, so you can see how many skill points you could possibly invest into it, and if relevant for the particular section, how many certificates you can claim. Not that most players pay too close attention to the certificates. Uh, veteran players have a better understanding of what the skills actually do, so they don't need the certificates to guide them as much as new players do. But you can click on any of the sections, and you can see all of the skills that exist. Uh, or at least if you go to this pop-up menu here, you can select all the skills that exist, or just the skills you have injected, uh, or the skills that you can uh, put into the training queue that is injected but not level 5 yet. Uh, skills that you have the prerequisites for, and the certificates. And there are no certificates for the Spaceship Command category. <clears throat> so you can look at all the skills that exist, uh, and see at a glance what level you have each skill trained up to and which skills you just simply uh, don't have injected right now right. similarly you can go and you can do this with any of the other uh, with any of the other skill categories so if I look at the social category for example I can see I've injected all of the skills but I've only trained them to various levels between say level 1 and level 4 
uh, if I go to drones, all right, these are all the various uh, drone uh, drone related skills that I've injected and what levels that I've trained them up to. All right. uh, it will also give you an estimate of how long it's going to take to train those skills given your current attribute distribution. Uh, and here, we actually, for the drones category, we do we actually have certificates. And you can take a look at certificates for, say, fighters, and what level of that certificate, and whether or not you're missing anything. So I don't have the level 5 certificate for fighters because I don't have uh, support fighters or the light fighters skill injected. Come to think of it, those, uh, th those skills are needed anyway for the level 1 certificate. Uh, but if I wanted to select, say, medium drones, right, uh, I have the cert uh, I meet all the requirements for the level one certificate, uh, and so on and so forth. As I said, most veteran players don't pay too close attention to the certificates. It's just basically bragging rights and guidelines and such. Most veteran players, like myself, uh, understand what the actual skills themselves do and choose skills to train up. Uh, based on the bonuses provided by the actual skills. So for any of these sections, you can click on uh, a category and see at a glance what skills you do and do not have, what you've trained them up to, so on and so forth. Beneath this, you also have the training queue. Uh, so uh, you, can all, you can click an X right here to remove it from your training queue. You can also click and drag things to change the order, provided, of course, that you're obey obeying certain restrictions, like you have to train level 3 of a skill before you can train level 4 of a skill, and you can also drag in a skill from the top section down into your training queue and insert it into the training queue that way. All right. All right, so you have your training queue presented here. All right. Uh, this thing indicates uh, just it's just to remind you that you have clone state omega double training speed enabled for those of you who have been playing eve online for years the actual skill training speed hasn't changed uh, if you're subscribed to eve online then the number of skill points you get per minute is still the primary attribute plus one half the secondary and that's skill points per minute uh, Clone grade alphas, again, I'll talk a bit about these a little bit uh, later in the video, uh, only get half this much. Alright, uh, let's see. And I have the menu icon here, add skills listed in clipboard to end of queue. That's if you've copied and pasted skill training plans from outside of EVE Online into your clipboard. Uh, and you can also clear the skill queue if you want to start off. Uh, if you want to refill your training queue from scratch. If you have any unallocated skill points, such as, for example, you used skill injectors on yourself, then you'll see the size of the pool down here and a button for apply skill points. Uh, personally, I've got uh, five and a half million unallocated skill points, uh, partly because I recently participated... This is the Singularity test server, so I participated in a mass test, so they gave me... Uh, two million unallocated skill points only for the test server, and the other three and a half million are from way back when the very old learning skills were removed and their skill points refunded. Right. So that takes that that pretty much covers the skills section. Uh, oh, there's also yeah, there's also a search term input box here. So if you need to search for the name of a skill, you might remember what a skill is called, but you don't remember what category it's in, you can put type part of the name in here. The next major tab you have is Character, and this has five sub-tabs. First is Augmentations, so this is, covers any implants that you currently have plugged into your head. Uh, the, if you want to remove any of your implants, you can right-click and unplug from here. The next sub-tab covers jump clones, and this will tell you when your next clone jump is available, as well as where all of your various clones are located, and you can also expand, uh, you can also expand a header to see what implants you have plug plugged into that clone. 
You can also click on the jump button to actually commit a clone jump or click the destroy button if you want to destroy that jump clone completely. The next tab you have are your attributes and you can see what your five attributes are as well as how many bonus remaps you have available and whether or not your annual remap is currently ready. And if it's ready, here's where you have the Remap Now button, and that just brings you to the neural remapping screen, which itself has not changed. Okay. Uh, the next sub-tab is where you, have, you can type in your biography. Uh, so sometimes when you uh, right-click somebody, you show info, and you look at... They might have a biography tab in here, if they do have a biography tab, then it's whatever they've typed into this section on their character sheet. All right. uh, finally, you have the decorations sub-tab, and these have three sub-sub-tabs, ranks, medals, and permissions. Uh, I assume ranks has to do with factional warfare. I'm not entirely clear on this. I've never seen anything in this section that pertained to me personally, so I assume it's a factional warfare thing. Uh, medals are any medals that were issued to you by a player corporation. Uh, so in my case, I've got Eve University Graduate, Eve University Professor, and the Service Medal of Excellence. And finally, you have the Permissions tab, which indicates... Uh, which, which lets you decide whether or not to display these in public or not display them at all. So if I wanted to hide the fact that I had these medals, I would set these to private and click save. Or if I later changed my mind and I wanted to show them off again, I would set public and click save. If I wanted to throw them away, I would click remove and then click save and that would get rid of the medals. One minor bug that, I, that the university and I noticed with medals a long time ago, uh, if you've got uh, a particular medal, like say, I have the Eve University Graduate Medal, more precisely I have four of them, if I try to throw those medals away by selecting Remove and Save, that makes it appear as though the Graduate Medals went away, but if the University then issues another Eve University Graduate Medal to me, those four are going to come back and then it's going to tack one more onto it and then I'll have gra five Graduate Medals. And that's the story of how I got four graduate medals by accident in the first place. So that covers the character tab. Next you have the interactions tab, and this has four sub-tabs. The first sub-tab covers kill rights, which I assume deals with any kill rights that you have on others because they committed a criminal action against you in higher low security space. Uh, or kill rights that others have against you because you committed a criminal action against them in high or low security space. So if there are any kill rights that pertain to you, incoming or outgoing, they're going to show up here. The next sub-tab covers standings, and this is for all the various NPC standings. You have the liked by and disliked by tabs. Um, ignore the fact that I'm positive 10 with everybody. Uh, again, this is a singularity test server, and there are slash commands that are available to ordinary players on the test server for testing purposes, such as slash boost standings. All right. um, but you can see all of you, but that only affects the faction standings. So you can see all of your current standings in under the standings sub tab, and you can take a look at for, and with any of these entries, uh, here, Republic Security Services, I can right-click and show transactions, and I can see any uh, recent standings changes because of things that I've done. All right, so just before I started recording this video, I did some test, was doing some testing and uh, ran three missions for a level two agent. Uh, next, you have the security status sub-tab. Uh, and if your security status, again, this number up in the upper right corner, if this has changed recently, then the reasons will be listed here. And I hit 5.0 such a long time ago that, that history has already been wiped a long time ago. 
All right, so in my case, it doesn't see any security status changes because it doesn't have logs for that. But if your security status has been going up or down, uh, you'll see a record of those changes here. The final sub-tab is the combat log, and here you can show both kills and losses. All right. The next major tab is your pilot license. All right. uh, and from this particular tab, uh, you can view pilot license extensions on the in-game market, or if you've got the real-world money, if you've got the dollars or the euros for it, uh, you can click on the Buy Plex button, and I assume that's going to open up the an out of your favorite out-of-game browser, Google Chrome in my case, and take you to the account management screen. Okay. Uh, but you can also use, besides maintaining your subscription so that you remain in Clone Omega state, uh, you can also turn, uh, use a pilot license extension to activate multiple character training so that you can train more than one character on the same account. Or you can convert a pilot license extension to Aurum if you want to take a look at the uh, vanity microtransactions. So that's found in the New Eden store which I'm not going to cover in much detail. The only microtransactions that EVE Online has are either cosmetic or are the skill extractors, which let you pull skill points out of your head so that you can sell them to somebody else. That's it. No other microtransactions. So that's the pilot license tab. Uh, next, you have the skins tab. Again, this relates to those cosmetic microtransactions I was talking about earlier. Uh, most you can purchase with Aurum. Some are given out for free by CCP every so often you, uh, for an annual event of some sort. Uh, but you can see how many uh, decorative skins that you have available uh, for any of your ships. So, let's see... I don't have a whole lot of skins. These don't normally interest me. But I could have sworn I had some. Here we go. Quave Corporation. So, a Dominix. Uh, let me grab a Dominix. Let me set this aside for a moment. And also open up my fitting window. Click on the skin section, and I have the Quaif skin available here. Uh, so it applies the Quaif skin. I can also click again to deactivate it and go back to the normal skin for the Dominix. Right. So this turns the skin on or off. Right. But anyway, going back to the character sheet, that's for the skins that you have. And again, that also has a search input box. So if I were interested in all the Dominix skins, everything for a Dominix battleship, here, you go, here we go. All right, so Valamore Legacy, Serpentis, Quaif, Intaki Syndicate, and Inner Zone Shipping. Finally, you have the History tab, and this has two sub-tabs, Employment and Skills. So Employment just indicates which corporation you were in, going all the way back to when your character was first created. So when I created my character back on September the 3rd, uh, its corporation of birth was Center for Advanced Studies, and then I joined Eve University for the very first time uh, later that month, so September the 28th, 2009. And then I switched between, frequently switched between Eve University and my alt core, uh, alt corporation, Dunhu Enterprises, usually when Eve University was the subject of a war declaration. Uh, for skills, you can see a history of your recent skill training activity. So if you forgot what it was that you trained up recently, you can consult this section. Uh, and that pretty much covers all of the changes 
to the character sheet. Now, the only the other big change that's coming to EVE Online is the introduction of what's being called Clone State Alpha. Uh, basically, it's a, a, f a new free-to-play mode for EVE Online. Those, who, those of us who are paying a subscription are probably not going to see very many are probably not going to see any changes not to ourselves directly so those of us who are subscribed were considered clone state omega right so we can train any skill in the game and provided that we meet the prerequisites for it of course and our skill training rate is per in skill points per minute is the primary attribute plus one half the secondary so if I decided I wanted to train Connections all the way up to level 5, well, Connections requires Charisma as a primary and Intelligence as the secondary. Uh, what are those values right now? So Charisma and Intelligence. So in my case, Charisma is 17 points, Intelligence is 32 points. The primary plus one half the secondary, 17 plus half of 32, that's 17 plus 16. I would train 33 skill points per minute uh, while trying to train up connections. Right. Alpha clones, those who are not subscribed, only get half that skill training rate. So, prime, so open parentheses, primary plus one half the secondary, close parentheses, now you divide that by two. So... That's for anybody who is uh, not subscribed. Additionally, they can only train certain skills up to certain levels, depending on uh, depending on their um, depending on their race. So, for example, and again, this is a singularity test server, so I can just simply switch my clone state with a slash command because I'm doing testing. So if my subscription were to lapse, all skill levels requiring Omega clone state will now be unavailable for training and disabled if they were already trained. So I would no longer benefit from Spaceship Command level 5, uh, which is a 10% reduction to my inertia modifier. That allows me to change my velocity more quickly. Now I only benefit from up to Spaceship Command level 3, that's only a 6% reduction to my inertia modifier. Any item requiring any of the disabled levels will be unavailable to use. Re upgrading clone state to Omega will re-enable those skill levels. If you're currently in space piloting a ship that requires Omega clone state, you will be able to fly it until you dock. But you'll find that a whole bunch of modules have suddenly gone offline. Your skill queue has been paused, and you might have to prune it in accordance to Alpha Clone State skill training limitations before you can resume training. Omega times 2 training speed will now be disabled. So in other words, I'm only training one half the primary plus one quarter the secondary skill points per minute, assuming I could find a valid skill to train. Right. Uh... So, for example, uh, so all these yellow, all this yellow that you see indicates uh, skills or skill levels that I cannot make use of because I'm no longer actually subscribed to EVE Online. If I, were, uh, if I let my subscription lapse. So I could still log in, I can still talk to people, I could undock in certain kinds of ships, I can attach certain kinds of modules to those ships, but it's kind of limiting, right? At least from my perspective, being a veteran who normal, nominally has 163 million skill points, right? So I can only benefit from a trade up to level 3, broker relations up to level 2, marketing up to level 2, for spaceship command... Uh, a lot of these skills are disabled. I can make use of Galente Cruiser 4, Galente Frigate 4, Galente Destroyer 4, Galente Industrial 1, Mining Frigate 4, Spaceship Command 3. Everything else in the Spaceship Command category is disabled. So I can't hop in an Omen or a Mauler or a, or a Rifter right? uh, or a Myrmidon. 
uh, so I can't use any of those ships because I'm uh, if I'm no longer subscribed. So if you're a clone state alpha, that's what all this yellow is going to mean. So when November 15th hits and, you, and you're still not subscribed, uh, if you haven't been subscribed to this entire time, you used to play EVE Online, you walked away a long time ago, you heard there's a new free-to-play mode, uh, you decide on November 15th or November 16th you're going to log in uh, without subscribing first, you're going to be looking at something like this. Uh, keep in mind, though, if you were in space at the time, a lot of your modules are going to go offline, and you're going to want to dock up in, a, in an NPC station rather quickly. Or you could probably also dock in a citadel uh, if you have docking rights in that citadel. Keeping in mind, of course, citadels can be destroyed. But uh, with any of these uh, skill categories... Uh, white indicates uh, skill levels that are allowed for a clone alpha, and yellow indicates skill levels that are only allowed to a clone omega. Uh, now, I trained all, as it turns out, I trained all these alpha level skills a very long time ago before they were chosen as being alpha level skills, so I'm not sure exactly what this is going to look like for a completely brand new player. Presumably you're going to have little white dots that you can train as an alpha and yellow dots for things you can't train as an alpha. Alright. But, yeah. Uh, a clone state alpha can only train certain limited skills. Um, a little unclear on all of the details surrounding this new free-to-play mode, I'm given to understand that CCP uh, will institute simultaneous login restrictions, such as the restrictions with the uh, tri with the old trial accounts, where if you have a trial account logged in on a particular machine, you cannot log in any other accounts at the same time, not even subscribed accounts. Uh, so you can log in any number of subscribed accounts from the same machine, or you can log in one trial account at the same time, uh, but not more than that. So not a trial account and something else. I'm given to understand that restriction is also being placed on clone alphas, uh, but I have to double check that. Um, so there has been some thought, uh, quite a bit of thought given to this system. Um, if you're interested in further details on clone alphas, I, I would advise checking the dev blogs. But anyway, slash omega, and I can do that because this is the test server. Right. Uh, but anyway, uh, that covers all of the changes coming in on November 15th to the character sheet. I'm Seamus Donahue of Eve University. Thank you for watching.